What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Adventure Outpost, your hub for all things movie related. Another weekend has come and gone. It is once again time to talk those juicy box office numbers. All eyes were looking to see the two big heavyweight battle this past weekend. Would Transformers be able to claim the number one spot or would the holdover from Spider-Man for the second weekend be able to topple those mighty Transformers and take the number one spot for a second week in a row? We're going to dive into all of that good stuff up today. But as always, before we dive into that, if you enjoy any of these quality of videos, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop some comments down below. It's how we help the algorithm grow. It's how we help this channel grow. But with all that out of the way, we're going to dive right into all that good stuff. And that is the answer to the question, who won the weekend? And it was a close battle. I was, it, I went back, I was solely convinced based on this weekend, especially at least based on my theater, that Spider-Man was going to come out on top. So Spider-Man was going to win the weekend and topple Transformers. It was going to be a close battle, but Spider-Man was going to come out on top and hold for two weekends in a row. And that ended up not being the case. But I feel like I, I'm so... I gotta see where. What theaters were it at where Transformers was blowing Spider-Man out of the water? Sp Transformers won the weekend. We're gonna dive into all that stuff in just a second. But like, if my theater that I work at and the theater where I went over the weekend to see movies, Transformers was not the biggest movie there. It was Spider-Man by a large margin. Especially in my theater. Spider-Man sold out still pretty much every show. And the only Transformers show that got close to selling out was one of the ones that was in more of the mid-sized theater. None of my Transformers in the big theaters got even close to selling out. But every Spider-Man show sold out in the big house and in the medium-sized house. So I was just like, Spider-Man's gonna do it, man. Spider-Man's taken this weekend again. And then when I went to one of the, I went to a dine-in theater, which is right by my house where I go to see movies, it was the same thing again. When I went to go buy the tickets, I wasn't seeing Spider-Man. I was seeing The Little Mermaid because I still hadn't seen that so far, so I had to get that out of the way. And then I went and saw Transformers um, actually today before um, I did this video earlier in the day. And Transformers, they, nobody was really buying tickets for it. It was it was all Spider-Man again. Everybody was there for Spider-Man. So I'm just, I'm curious where the big markets were that was Transformers heavy that put us with a Transformers number one spot because that movie made a that movie had a really good opening weekend. That is a very solid opening weekend for Transformers, especially where the latest ones have been recently with these movies coming out. That is a huge return for this franchise. We're going to dive into all that stuff, as always, coming up quick. First, as always, though, we got to start with our 2023 box office chart, where we look at week over week just how well the box office is doing in the years to come, in the, in the years to come, in what we're in right now. So, as always, we go to that chart and take a look here. As you can see in our 2323, I am all over the place. It's late at night. You know how it is late at night. You're stumbling over your words left and right. In the 23rd week of the year, this past weekend, we were $163 million for the top 10. It was down 19.6% over last weekend. But with last weekend's absolutely phenomenal Spider-Man opening, it was going to be tough to topple that one, even with second week Spider-Man adding to the Transformers. But still, $163 million is really solid. That now puts us at 13 weeks so far in the year that we have been blockbuster weekends. We've been over $100 million. So this is solid. 13 weekends out of 23 so far, that's pretty solid, especially when you had a lot of light crap that wasn't really coming out in the middle of January and February. So buoyant by some good holdover from Avatar and Puss and Boots. We've managed to be ahead of the curve and we've had 13 weeks so far over 100 million on the weekend. That is solid. But now we'll dive into the top 10. We'll take a look. We'll see where Transformers lied in its number one opening. Just how well it did. Just how well Spider-Man did. It was a good weekend here at the box office. Like we said, 163 million is nothing to sneeze at. That is really solid. And we're finally getting back to the days where you're getting multiple movies having these large grosses. You know, we were, we were going from a, a bad time coming out of COVID where you would get maybe one movie would do really well and everything else was like barely sniffing up the bar. It was barely making double digits in the millions of dollars. Everything was like under 10 million. You get your big opening weekend for your main movie and everything else had barely anything. But we're finally getting back into that time where you're getting three plus movies making over $20 million in a weekend. So we are very back into that healthy cinema experience where people are going out in large droves to check out all manners of things. It's not just 
the the biggest of the big anymore. People are going out, we're checking out these movies, we're seeing bigger stuff, we're seeing all the stuff, and we're finally getting movies, multiple movies that are doing very well week over week here at the box office. So let's dive into that top 10 and we're gonna take a look here at this chart right now. So like we said, Transformers Rise of Beast was the number one movie in this week after a hard fought battle with Spider-Man. It debuted in the number one spot with $60.5 million off of a $200 million budget. So that's a pretty solid opening weekend. Still, it, it blows my mind. This movie, that's so much money. It's crazy that every blockbuster that comes out now costs $200 million to make. It, it blows my fucking mind. That, that's just such an egregiously large amount of money to spend on it. And most of these movies don't look any worse or any better than the ones from like the Transformers from like 10 years ago, which weren't being made for $200 million. So it begs the question, what the fuck is this $200 million going towards? Because it's, it's insane. There was nothing in this movie that was that revolutionary compared to any of the other Transformers movies. And so it's like, where, like what what is all these these movies being spent on? Because if you look in, and we're going to take a look, everything mostly in this top four at least has just stupid budgets. Just absolutely stupid budgets. And this is another one. Transformers really going to have to come up to par right now if it's going to make that $200 million back, at least here domestically. I mean, of course, worldwide, the Transformers movies do gangbusters. All of them have made a, a, just a shit ton of money. So I'm sure this movie will at least make its budget back worldwide. But when you want to look at things domestically, especially when it's like this is the market where the U.S. is where these movies are coming out. If you want these movies to perform in your market, in your home market, and a lot of these movies just aren't snipping up to par for a lot of that. So it's crazy that we're dropping 200 million on a movie. It's not even going to make 200 million domestically, or it's it's possible. It's going to be questionable to see what the holdover is for this movie because that's where it's going to lie. If if you get a good holdover, it's solid. But there is so much shit coming out week over week, it is really tough for these movies to have any sort of longevity if they are not up to par with critically and audience level. And the Transformers movies have never been one of those movies that just link up together with those of, of, of that ilk. So it's going to take a lot for this movie, at least domestically, to make that money back. I did see it today uh, before we made this video. Earlier today, I went and caught it. And it's definitely one of the better ones. I'm not going to lie. I don't I think most of the Transformers movies are absolute dog shit. They're just so ridiculously over the top, just beat you in the face sensory overload that you can't even really get in on that, on any of it. And don't get me wrong, this movie has plenty of that. But there's also some scaled back notions of it. I think it takes a little more time with actually telling a simple story and not trying to be so ridiculously complex with lore and out of control shit that like Michael Bay would do. It's a more simple story. Um, it's enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie. I think I think the '90s setting for it and the '90s aesthetic of playing it with the the '90s early hip hop really worked for the movie. At least it worked for me in the scale of this movie. Like I was once we met. Um, I forget what his name is, but the the kid from In the Heights, and we got that whole scenario. I was like. I, this is enjoyable. I'm in. This movie played on the right side of being a big, dumb, fun movie. So it was, it was, it was precarious on there. And there were some points where like it dipped a little bit where I was like, oh no, it's turning. But it never really got so bad where I was like with the other Transformers movies where I was like, please God, let it fucking end and let it kill me. Um, it, also, the not bad runtime for this is solid. It's like just over two hours, which is great because the biggest sin that a lot of these movies made with Michael Bay was what if we made Transformers and it was almost a three hour long movie. Movie and it was like, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. That's a terrible fucking idea. Um, so this one had restraint, simplicity to it. It, it was, this was a fine, big, dumb summer movie. I enjoyed it. And the audacity of the way in which they set up the sequel also has me like, uh, they got me. I was just like, I am pretty excited for whatever you do next, because that's a hilarious way to end this movie and a hilarious way to get people interested in this series. Again, it was, uh, whoever came up with that idea kudos to you because that was really good <laughs> in second place holding on absolutely phenomenally strong is spider-man across the spider-verse in its second week dropping only 54.1 percent brings in 55 million dollars to bring sold domestic home 225 million off of a 100 million dollar budget absolutely hard fought victory this weekend for transformers but that is crazy two movies this weekend absolutely huge right there 60 million dollar for the first movie 55 million dollars for the second movie that is amazing to do post pandemic right now and an absolutely glorious sign that shows that people are back in theaters that for two movies to do almost 60 million dollars is just an absolute fantastic 
opening weekend right there for one movie and a fantastic second hold for another movie. So theaters are absolutely back in a big way. People are going out to see movies. If you are still on the fence about going back to the movies, I implore you to get your ass back into a movie theater because it doesn't matter how good your home setup is. It doesn't matter what you got in the box. Nothing beats going to the theater. And I know what so many people are going to say is that the theater experience is crap these days seeing it with all these people that are just like horrible people on their phones doing whatever, whatever. And I hear all that. I get all that. But to what I'll say to that is stop going to the theater on like opening weekend nights, like Friday night and Saturday night. Don't go to the theater. Like I, I don't have sympathy for you if you're going to the movies at the worst time to go to a movie. Like if you're going to a movie that's kind of a sold out show and you're going on a weekend time when like a lot of kids and teenagers going, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's dumb. It's a bad move. I was off on Saturday. I wanted to see Transformers. I sure as shit wasn't going Saturday night. Absolutely not. I went this morning when I had a few hours and I didn't have work or anything. And you know what? I was one of three people in the entire theater. You just got to pick your moments. You got to pick your right times to go to the theater. And I know it's tough. It is tough to get out there. Sometimes weekends are your best bet to go. I know it's tough, but there are ways to get around and see movies at times when it is not as disruptive as Friday nights and Saturday nights. You just got to find your moments. And I promise if you search for them, you'll find them. You'll get your good theater experience because it's out there. You just got to go out and work for it. And rounding us out in the top three right here, we got The Little Mermaid in its third week. Drops 44.9%, takes in $22 million, bringing its total domestic hold $228 million of a $250 million budget. So this was a huge weekend. Three movies right there making over 20 million dollars that is absolutely fantastic here at the box office we got it rounding out in fourth place guardians of the galaxy volume three in its sixth week drops 34.2 percent takes in seven million dollars to bring its total domestic hold to 335 million dollars off of a hundred million dollar budget look at this this is insane how big all these budgets are for all these movies it's just absolutely fucking absurd and then we have rounding out the top five, Boogeyman holding on right now in the top five in its second week, drops 44%, takes in $6 million to bring Soul Domestic Hold to $24 million off a $35 million budget. So this movie can hang around for a few more weeks. It looks like it'll make its budget back and make itself a neat little profit, but definitely not the big horror movie uh, that they wanted it to be, especially in the past like year or two where horror movies have been doing so well. They were definitely hoping for this to be last summer's The Black Phone, and it looks like this one's just not settling in to do that. So all eyes now will be turning to Insidious the Red Door to see what it's going to do here over the summer and if it can kind of bounce back horror in a big way here for the rest of the year. In sixth place on the back five, we got Fast X in its fourth week. Drops 46.1%, takes in $5 million, brings its total domestic hole to $138 million off of a $340 million budget. We'll talk more about that movie worldwide at least where it's actually making a splash, but here domestically at least, this movie is just sputtering. This engine is just not firing to life and the Fast X saga, at least domestically, is showing absolutely absolute signs of wear and tear. In seventh spot, we've got the Super Mario Brothers holding strong, made it to double digits in its 10th week, still in the top 10, drops 37.1%. It takes in $2.1 million, bringing its total domestic hold to $570 million of a $100 million budget. The question now is, how much does this movie have left in the tank now that it is on streaming? It's on physical media. You can watch it at home. How much more is this movie going to put up in the top 10 now that you don't have to go out of your way to go and see it? In eighth place, About My Father, still hanging out here in the top 10 somehow. In its Third week drops 58.9%, takes in $845,000, brings total domestic hold to $10 million of a $30 million budget. So this movie absolutely struggling to make its budget back. And much in the same place in the ninth position is The Machine in its third week, drops The Sign of the Devil 66.6%, takes in $575,000 to bring its total domestic hold to $10 million off a $20 million budget. So these two movies are just neck and neck of mediocrity right now, just each trying to just claw its way into at least hitting back its even budget. But I don't think either of them are going to have much in it because I'm sure both of these movies are going to bow out this upcoming weekend with The Flash, with Elemental and Asteroid City all being unleashed on theaters. And then rounding out the top 10 is a movie that was um, actually unleashed on more theaters this weekend. It's Past Lives in its second week, up 124.4%, obviously getting a much more wider release than it was last week. It took in 520000 to bring its total domestic goal to 867000 off a budget we have no idea from another A24 classic. Now, as always, we like to say goodbye to our fallen heroes. These are our heroes that did their time in the top 10, but have bowed out for greener passages. We have two movies this weekend that have bowed out of the top 10. They are as follows. 
Kandahar, after two weeks on the chart, bows out, as well as You Hurt My Feelings, bows out after two weeks, two movies from the Memorial Day splurge of just random, mediocre movies. You guys did your time, you had your say, you had your fill, but now it's time to bow out. We will see you in the realm of physical media, and as always, we salute you. Now, with the release of Transformers and its $60 million opening, it got us to wondering just how well that was in the pantheon of Transformers releases. Was it enough to get up there in the top five of openings for Transformers? And it was, but just barely. We take a look here now for the top five opening weekends for the Transformers franchise. And as you can see right there in fifth place, Transformers Rise of the Beasts manages to squeak in to the top five opening weekend earners with its $60.5 million. Trails behind the original Transformers from July 3rd 2007 where it opened to 70.5 million transformers dark of the moon in third spot releasing june 29th 2011 to 97 million dollars the fourth one transformers age of extinction being released june 27th 2014 to 100 million dollars and then the big winner which is considered by many, myself included, to be the worst Transformers movie, is Transformers Revenge of the Fall in the first sequel, coming out June 24th, 2009, open to $108 million. So June is a pretty good month for the Transformers franchise. It has been very good to that franchise. A lot of huge openings, and with the release of Rise of the Beast, it now has another one to join that pantheon of big earners from the Transformers franchise. Will Rise of the Beast be able to hit the highs of the Transformers franchise? I believe Age of Extinction made at least a billion dollars. A bunch of the other ones are sitting in the 700 to 800 range. Will this movie have enough to get up into that upper pantheon? That remains to be seen, but as you know, we will sit here and we will chart along and we will see just where that movie ends up when all is said and done. We quickly turn our attention to the high earners for the Super Mario franchise. It looks like this movie is finally running out of steam. It's finally going to be settling out of the top 10 soon. So we might finally be able to see where this movie is going to f finally lie in the highest grossing worldwide and domestic charts. We'll quickly take a look at them now. There has been no change in the domestic charts. So we won't look at that one. That movie still sitting behind The Incredibles 2. It has no chance of hitting 600 million domestically at this point. This movie, that movie I think is a lock. It's going to settle in right behind The Incredibles 2. So I don't think there's going to be any change in that spot but worldwide it has moved up another spot again as always it's just slowly inching its way up that top highest grossing movies worldwide of all time we'll take a look at the chart here real quick as you can see right now super mario brothers movie sitting in the 18th spot managed to jump into the top 20 now look at that it is just ahead now of jurassic world fallen kingdom it sits in 18 with 1.315 billion dollars and i think Finally, this might be where this movie is going to end up settling because I don't know if it has in it another like $15 million to pass the number 17 spot, which is Star Wars The Last Jedi with 1.332. And then I don't think it's got anything in it to pass Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 at 1.342. So I think 18 spot is where this movie is going to finally settle. But that is an absolute huge win for this movie and for what I'm sure is going to be a new franchise for Universal and Illumination, the Super Mario franchise and I'm sure we're going to start getting your, your Legend of Zelda movies, all those other movies that are going to create finally to our Super Smash Brothers movie. I, we can only hope that one day that movie is going to come to fruition and give us all the good stuff that we want because that's the new Avengers Infinity War and Endgame that now. That's what we want. We want the Super Smash Brothers movie. Let's build to it. We turn now from the highest of all time worldwide to now just the top 10 worldwide for 2023. We take a look here at the chart real quick. In first place, we've got the Super Mario Brothers movie with $1.315 billion. Guardians of the Galaxy in the second spot, inching so close to the billion dollar mark. It's sitting at $8.05 right now. Will it have the last $200 million left in the tank to get to $1 billion? It remains to be seen, but we're hoping it does because it is always good to get a billion dollar movie in the charts. Right behind that, we got Full River Red with $673 million. Jumping up a spot into the fourth spot is Fast X with $652 million. So while this movie is doing absolutely nothing domestically, worldwide the Fast and Furious franchise is still an absolute huge money earner, making almost $700 million right now. So right now, at least worldwide, this movie is still raking in the dough and it is moving up the charts. Where it will finish for the year remains to be seen, but as of right now, fourth spot ain't nothing to sneeze at. And rounding out the top five is The Wandering Earth 2 with $604 million. In sixth spot, we've got Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with $476 million. John Wick Chapter 4 right behind that with $432 million. The Little Mer 
Mermaid in eighth spot with $414 million right now. This movie doing very well domestically, but is doing terribly international. So this is the inverse of Fast and the Furious movie, but it just goes to show how detrimental that worldwide market is. Because while Fast X wasn't doing much domestically, the worldwide total managed to make it almost $700 million. And then inversely, now domestically, The Little Mermaid has bumped it up very, at least to almost the $500 million mark. But internationally, it's just not giving itself enough to push this movie up high enough to where it needs to be. Which is crazy because I, when I was making my bets, considered The Little Mermaid was going to be the number one movie of the year. I thought based off of Aladdin and based off The Lion King and all those, that this movie was going to quietly make a billion dollars like all the rest of those. And I couldn't have been more wrong. In the ninth spot, we've got Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse sitting at $389 million right now. And Creed 3 rounding at the top 10 with $273 million. Spider-Man debuting up onto this chart knocks out a movie that has been a mainstay pretty much since the beginning of the year. And it was those good old boonie bears. Sorry, boys, but better luck next time. Then we take a look over on the domestic front, of course, in first spot, still the Super Mario Brothers movie with $570 million. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 right behind that with $335 million. The Little Mermaid in third spot with $228 million. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with $225 million. Ant-Man and the Wasp really taking a dive this past weekend with all these other movies jumping up into these high charts. It now sits at just outside at the number fifth spot with $214 million. John Wick Chapter 4 right behind that with $186 million. Creed 3 with 156 million. Fast X and Little Mermaid pretty much switch spots here between worldwide and domestic. It sits domestically at only 138 million. Scream 6 and 9 spot with 108 million. And rounding out the top 10, Megan with 95 million dollars. We turn our attention now to one of my favorite charts. That is the 2023 Top 10 Chart Riders. This is where we take a look and see just the best legs that these movies have held here in 2023. So at the end of the year, we can take a look and see what movie had the best legs here at the box office. What was the movie that got people jiving into the theaters the most for the longest longevity? We're going to take a look here at the chart right now. And we got some pretty interesting movements going on here. And the main one is looking at Super Mario Brothers. It joins as the only 2023 movie to hit double digit it's in the top 10. It sits right now at 10 weeks. Is only one week away from tying Puss in Boots for the second spot and only two weeks away from tying Avatar and only three weeks away from becoming the number one movie here in the top 10 chart for the best legs in 2023. It would be great to have a 2023 movie be at the top of the 2023 top 10 chart riders, but I don't know. I mean, does it have three more weeks in the top 10? If it wasn't already now released on physical media and on streaming, I would say absolutely Absolutely, but it, it could grind to a halt now that so many people have bought it on physical media or on VOD or streaming or whatever they buy and, and stream or watch their movies. So this movie might grind to a halt. It might not last in the top 10 for too much longer. So we might end up at the end of the year with Avatar being the best legs of 2023, the holdover from 2022, because outside of Super Mario Bros., I don't see any other movie having the longevity of 13 weeks in the box office to beat Avatar. It's 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 crazy that we might end up there. But as you can see, Avatar in the first spot, Puss in Boots in the second spot with 11 weeks, Super Mario Brothers in the third with 10 weeks, John Wick Chapter 4 locked in now in the fourth spot with 9 weeks, A Man Called Otto and Dungeons and Dragons locked in at 8 weeks, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania locked in at 7 weeks, Guardians of the Galaxy right now is sitting at the median average of 6 weeks. Will it have another week in it so that it doesn't join the league of Sixers? That remains to be seen. I think it'll have enough in it to at least get up up to probably into the eighth or ninth spot right here. It's still in the top five, so I think it's safe that this movie is going to have another week in it there. And then as you can see, you've got the median average of all those six weekers. you got Scream 6, Creed 3, Jesus Revolution, Megan, Missing, Air, and Evil Dead Rise all locked in at six weeks apiece. you got Cocaine Bear in the ninth spot locked in at five weeks. And joining us here in the top ten chart riders is Fast X, which is sitting pretty right now at four weeks. And that'll do it for all of us here this week and the charts. It was another spectacular weekend. June is just flourishing with huge opening weekends here at the box office. And it's not changing anytime soon because this weekend we are getting a three-peat of fucking 
the big movies coming out. We got uh, The Flash, obviously, is going to be the big winner of the weekend. This movie, obviously, is going to take number one. It's set to have a huge opening weekend of $70 million, it's claiming. So that's obviously going to take number one. But the big question, I think now, is going to be just how well is Elemental going to be doing the new Disney Pixar movie? Disney Pixar has been struggling at the box office right now. Disney, in general, in animated movies right now, have been struggling at the box office. I think it's a mixture of them just not telling the right stories or put it to, that's going to get asses in the seats. And then also, so they've trained people now to expect these movies to come out on Disney Plus only a few weeks after it's released in theaters. So you've trained a whole just just collection of moviegoers that normally would just be in droves out to see your movies to just sit at home and wait for these movies to drop on Disney Plus. So they've got to kind of like train the audience to get back into the theater for these movies. And I don't think Elemental is going to be the one to do it. I think it looks like it's going to be a good movie. Pixar never disappoints. Whether it's just an average Pixar movie, a fantastic Pixar movie, or somewhere in between those two they never tell a bad movie they've never put out a horrible movie an unwatchable movie so i think this movie is going to be good it's probably going to be more in the middle of the pack along with the cars franchise and the good dinosaur and movies of that ilk but that doesn't mean necessarily mean it's a bad thing pixar just always gives at least worthwhile stories that feel like you got your money's worth the problem is is the marketing for this movie is not one that lends itself to get people back into the theater right now they need a big one to attract people back into the theater for the Disney Pixar properties. And I just don't think Elemental is going to be the one to do it. So the question now, is Elemental an easy lock-in for second place? Or is it going to be fighting with the second weekend of Transformers and the third weekend of Spider-Man? Because if Spider-Man has a really good holdover again, it's entirely possible that Elemental is duking it out with those two movies for second place. So it's a very a huge lingering question going into this weekend is just what the performance of Elemental is going to be again the second week of Transformers and the third week into Spider-Man. So it is just going to be an absolutely just intense battle this weekend watching how all these movies are going to play out. And then you also have Wes Anderson's Asteroid City coming out. This one, obviously, nobody has to... I, it'll, I think it'll place in the top 10, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the top ones because I think, like, if I... I'll make the prediction right now and we'll see how we do next weekend. The Flash, taken number one. They're saying Elemental is going to do like $40 million. So I think it's going to be a hard-fought battle, but I think Elemental is going to hold on to number two. I think it's, it's going to take number two. It's not going to be anywhere near as good as they want it to be, and Pixar and Disney are definitely not at the highs that they were from like 2015 to 2019 where just every one of their animated movies was just making fucking bank. But I think it'll, I think it'll do enough to lock itself in at second place. Then I think the, the big question then is, is how does Transformers and Spider-Man play off of each other? next weekend like what is the holdover for transformers going to be is it going to be enough to keep itself in a high spot or is the third week of spider-man going to overtake the second week of transformers i think that's going to be the case i think spider-man is going to take number three i think um transformers will take number four and i think the little mermaid will round out the top five and i think that's going to be our top five um i don't trust anything on that for me it's not locked in at stone in any way i could be completely wrong on all of that stuff but that's going to be our prediction for this weekend of what the top five movies are going to be so make sure you check back here next week when we take a look in and we see just how well we did we see if that uh, stacks up at all and we're also going to see if maybe transformers puts enough in the tank in the second weekend to get it to blockbuster status so we can check off another one off my blockbuster list for this movie here domestically at least but that'll do it for all of us here at the outpost in this adventure on until the next one, you have been you, I have been me, these are the movies that we love so much, and I'll see you at the theater.